Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, Trackstar family. What's good? I am your host, Shayna, and you are here for yet again another episode of One Track Record. If you are new here, hi. Welcome. This is an open dialogue channel, okay? We are here for real self-reflection, real conversations, and just an outlet to get away from everything negative, really. Okay, we're working on ourselves. We are doing so so that we can have seamless relationships with everyone else. You know, because sometimes not everybody is the problem. Sometimes we're the problem. I know sometimes I'm the problem. And it takes a lot for me to just stop saying, oh, well, I'm the problem. To then saying, you know what? I'm going to work on myself. A narcissist here. (laughs) Especially when it comes to (laughs) taking accountability with our cassette tapes. Side A for the women and side B for the men. I love doing those. Let me know in the comment section or the live if you want me to do one of those. Because I feel another one coming. I, You know I do. Okay. It may not be <laughs> about friendships because we've kind of done those already with those. But I feel another cassette tape session coming. So again, let me know. Also, some of you may have noticed that I have updated the email information. So yes, go ahead, send those inquiries to me at onetrackrecord123 at gmail.com. Now, today's content, it's going to feel more so like a standard cassette tape episode, but keep in mind, those of you that are new, you may be confused by the lingo. I have different set lists, different playlists, so that if you see CD, it means it's for both men and women. If you see cassette tape episodes, side A, again, is for the women. Side B is for the men. And then there's bonus track, which is bonus content that usually stems off from CDs. Now, today's going to be kind of chill, okay? Just imagine us as a family, wherever you are. Just imagine you're maybe on your way home from work or to your next function, you're in traffic, Just chill, you know, I don't got nothing too crazy on the screen, all right? This is the unsafe friend and social etiquette track of the friendship series. Why am I doing this? Because certain things that you may think would be common sense is not all that common to everybody. And there's a lot of walking red flags when it comes to friendships and things that you may have dealt with and learned through experience or just through family settings, whoever raised you, that other people did not. And it's very alarming how many adults are out here that are low-key rude, stuck up, narcissistic. The list goes on. So we're going to talk about that today. 
But we're going to start out with a list that I've comprised of nine things, some identifiers of quote unquote friends that really are emotionally and intellectually unsafe. We spoke about emotional intelligence and intelligence with the heart versus the mind. I'll include that link at the end of this video as well, as well as things like temperaments. These things are super important to identify. Imagine you learn how to move through a room based off of body language. You know how powerful that is? That's something I low-key learned about in college. I had to pay for that. But anywho, let's start with this list. So number one, what's number one on my list of an identifier of a quote-unquote friend that is a bit unsafe? Number one, they always appear perfect and never show vulnerabilities or weaknesses. Insert eye roll. Lord have mercy. <laughs> have you ever had a friend, quote unquote, where it seems like you guys met, you hit it off, everything seems to be going smooth, maybe too smooth. And you exchange numbers, you maybe hang out, maybe it's once a week, maybe it's twice a week, right? That's crazy, we're adults, we all have lives. But maybe it takes you a few months after hanging with this person to realize, hey, I don't exactly know too much about this person but I feel like they may know more about me, especially with what I'm dealing with on my day-to-day. -day. They may know maybe how I'm doing, what I'm doing, my dating status, the problems I may have with my significant other. But when they start talking about their significant other, they don't really say much. It just seems very secretive where they gloss over it, change the subject. Yeah, those type of friends, six red flags, not a great adventure. I'm sorry to say you might want to keep an eye out for this person. You might want to start making yourself busy and unavailable. Let's go to number two. I could be wrong. If you think I'm wrong... Just hit me up in the comments, live chat, or just send me an email. Am I bugging? Is one track bugging? I don't know. You tell me. Number two. People who wear religion on their backs but cannot grasp the concept of spirituality. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm about to ruffle some feathers, bro. Ooh. Brother, ooh. <laughs> all right, hear me out because this sounds crazy at first glance for all my Christians, right? I understand how this may seem crazy, but what if I told you that the very person who you may have dedicated your life to? Legit came here to bash religion. What is religion? Religion, for the most part, is organized. Okay? It may come with certain traditions, things that are done regularly, certain rules that you may have to abide by. I'm pretty sure the book said he came to break those, right? But there's something as of lately that I stumbled upon that was very interesting to me. The concept of how the word religion was formed comes from the Latin, 
which is relegare or relegare. It's a Latin verb, which means to rebind, referring to obligation, bond, or reverence. Hmm. So is it possible, let's say in the sense of Christianity, that you're more bound to tradition than you are the person who helped establish the religion that you're currently participating in? Are you more caught up with the ways in which you're doing things instead of the reason why you're doing it? Hmm. <laughs> things that make you go, hmm. And I say this because I'm a person that a lot of people at first glance would be like, wow, you a Christian? And I'm just like, textbook? Nah, not at all. Why do I say that? Because I am a person that very much believes that relationship trumps religion every time. You don't need to necessarily spew Bible verses at people in order to win them over. First of all, it's not you that needs to win people over. That's God's business. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. It's unnecessary and it can be taken as mockery. Let me just go ahead to number three because <laughs> we're not ready for that. Number three, a person who avoids criticism at all costs and refuses and refutes feedback. Have you ever, quote unquote, been in a friendship where you legit have seen, not even you, but others come to them about things? And in your face, they will try their best to refuse what is being said and refute feedback. That sounds pretty sound. Nothing crazy. Maybe a person letting them know that they shouldn't have said something or done something. But when they refute, let's take a look at that word. To refute, to prove something or someone is wrong, to discredit or belittle, could be a narcissistic tendency. And again, I am not a licensed psychologist or psychiatrist, but I got to call a spade a spade. It's giving narcissism. One thing narcissists like to do especially in front of other people when they like when other people like you they want to discredit belittle you to make you not seem perfect and them seem perfect because ultimately they do not have good self esteem about them narcissists tend to have very little self esteem but an inflated ego at the same time they build their ego off of hurting other people. Let's go to number four. When they come off as self-righteous, knowing, doing, and living in perfection and has no ounce of humility. O-M-G. This could kind of go back to number two, right? Where people have their own sense of religion. They have their own set ways of how to live a perfect life. And if you don't abide by what they say, then you're not perfect when no one's perfect, okay? Last time I checked, everybody has to take off their pants and put on their pants one leg at a time. If you jump in and out of your pants 
at the same rate with both legs. First of all, you're strange. Okay, let's just go to number five before I say something else that's extra weird. <laughs> when they apologize repeatedly for the same thing with no change in pattern or behavior. <sighs> <laughs> I think all of us can agree of the old saying. There's no apology better than changed behavior. When a person apologizes, quote unquote, and they still keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Maybe it's not even with you but you see them apologizing for what they did, but they still keep doing the same thing to other people. But because you put down that boundary, they're not willing to try with you. <sighs> Let's go to number six. People who are good at complaining, they never can come up with any solutions ever and they think delaying conflict resolution will either, quote unquote, fix itself or, quote unquote, blow over. If I had a dollar for every narcissist that has come in my life or a real friend's life who decided that, <laughs> that if I avoid, then it could solve itself. There would be signs. I wouldn't be doing this right now. I'd be on a private island with a helicopter and all that, and maybe a yacht, no ditty. Okay? Do me a favor. Please don't strike up a new convo with me if you owe me an apology, respectfully. Because what you're really doing, aside from pissing me off, is trying to take this, the route of being disrespectful and trying to, to see if I'm stupid. Okay? Don't, don't do it. Please don't do it. Please. The, these people that are good at complaining, have you ever had a friend, a quote-unquote friend, where even the simplest of things, trying to, to go out with them and have a good time. They always have to find something wrong with the plan, but they never try to have a better plan. We try to pick out something to eat. Oh, you don't like this. Oh, why? Oh, you know, I just don't feel like it. Okay, so what do you want? Oh, I don't know. Don't come around me with that energy, please, please. Because it might start with something small like food. And next thing you know, we fighting on vacation. And we come back and we're not friends no more. I could have saved a thousand. I could have been miserable with a thousand dollars more at home. Okay. Let's go number seven. People who have a sense of entitlement to your trust and every other perk that comes with being close to you instead of earning it through longevity, aka building a track record with you. I hmm, I am triggered by this. Have you ever met somebody who love bombed you? I'm talking like the first thing on this list, who legit love bombed you. Everything just seems so effortless and perfect. You guys got along so quickly. Within a few weeks, y'all are over here sharing and exchanging uh, sob stories. You might be trauma bonding. And then next thing you know, poof. They think they know you. They done sized you up so much that they now feel because you've disclosed so many things to them and they've chosen what to disclose to you to make you comfortable enough that you're somehow indebted to them that they need to know everything about you 
They need to always have access to you. Maybe they're not allowed to have any, you're not allowed to have any other best friends. Yeah, that's got to go. I don't know what in the love and hip hop, real housewives of whatever eight locations they got, got you thinking that reality TV, quote unquote, reality TV is what we need to emulate because no, it is not. Grow up. We 30, 40 years old, we do not need to be having sleepovers. Okay. No, I do not need to be hanging out with you more than I need to be hanging out with my man because that's weird. Hmm. Lack of accountability and finger pointing when you discuss your grievances with them personally. <laughs> I mentioned this ar- already, right? <laughs> Because if you're not willing to take accountability for something that makes me uncomfortable and you never speak to me again, but then the next time you speak to me, you you do things as if it's all hunky-dory, it's casual, it's cool, it's, it's, it's calm, right? Don't do me. <laughs> Don't do me. Don't do me. Okay, don't do me. We're not doing this. Let's go to the last one. Number nine, people who lie when the truth will do. I don't know what goes through people's minds. When you lie and you were never pressed to lie. And by pressed, I mean nobody held you and cornered you against the wall. You just lie because of it, just because you can, just to see who will believe you. Why? Ooh, brother, ooh. (laughs) Why? (laughs) Please let me know if this list is helpful. If you'd like to add to this list, if this clarifies anything for you, if this makes you side side eye anybody in your life currently, let me let me know, okay? As we move on to the next segment of this content for today. Now, here's the part of the show where we more so speak about social etiquette. And this can go for both friendships, even business partnerships, where Let's be honest. If you live in America, you're more than likely going to spend the majority of your time with your coworkers who may or may not become friends or you're at least friendly or cordial with. Okay? So they're an extension of you and they do control your mood. They do have an impact on your day to day. So I've managed to, with the help of social media, comprise somewhat of a list of things that I have agreed with that somebody had sent me via email. Thanks for that. And I think it was important to talk about now that we are going through the whole thing of friendship with this series. So let's talk about it. Social etiquette for making and maintaining healthy friendships slash partnerships or business partnerships, okay? Number one. Avoid calling someone repeatedly more than twice in a row. Leave a message or a text and assume they have business to attend to. Oh my goodness. Have you ever had a friend or have you ever decided to conduct business with somebody and they blew up your phone to the point where you're like, are they okay? Is somebody going to have to ask me to blink one for yes and two for no? Am I safe? Not only does this come across as clingy per se, but it gives a sense of desperation that a lot of people would be turned off from, even if you have the best of intentions. It is not healthy, especially as 
grown men and women to let people know that subconsciously you cannot live without them or you cannot maintain business without them. It's kind of a red flag. Okay. Especially for business. What? If someone were to blow me up constantly, I'm talking about in a row. Let's say if somebody called me four or five times, somebody had better died because why else would you be blowing up my, or it better be a check in the mail for a million dollars. Let's go to number two. If you borrow money, pay it back. Let it be known when it can be given back before taking it and do it before said date and time. Paying it back before said date and time shows integrity and character, which builds a good track record of trust. The whole reason as to why I have this channel is to help build interpersonal track records and personal track records. This right here, matter of fact, I want to even spin this. If you're going to lend money also, as my father would say, this is the best advice my father has ever given me. If you lend somebody money, consider it a gift. If they give your money back, great. If they don't, make sure it's because you are okay if you were not to get it back. Does that make sense? Because to end a friendship over somebody who could possibly not give you your money back, there, yes, there has been times when I have given money, but the peace I have had from cutting them off because I now have a reason to say I'm done and mean it. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's just easier to let people go instead of having the awkward conversations of borrowing money, if that inconveniences you more than them. Choose you first. You got to be selfish before you can become selfless. Let's go to number three. When someone is paying, whether this is for business, a date, or a friend outing, Avoid picking the most expensive dish on the menu. Impressions, whether they are first, last, or in between, are important. Be thoughtful. <laughs> no, because I'm triggered, y'all. I'm triggered, I'm triggered, I'm triggered. Okay, so am I the only one that has had a friend in the past where we go out to eat? And because somebody says, you know what, let's celebrate the moment. It's lit. I'm paying. Someone's like, okay, great. I was about to order a grilled cheese sandwich, but now I can get the lobster bisque. What? <laughs> First of all, why are you even here? Why did you even leave the house to come with us if you know you was broke? You knew you was going to have a grilled cheese. You knew you was going to have chicken tenders and fries. Now, all of a sudden, because you're not paying, you got to have a lobster bisque. And then got the nerve to sit here and ask for the Cheddar Bay biscuits extra when we're leaving as if you paid. <sighs> and this is why I don't leave my house. Because I'm tired of people. <laughs> How do you like y'all, okay? People upset me in ways I can't understand. Let's go to number four. Ooh, ooh. Don't ask people why they are or are not married or have or don't have a kid or kids or what they own. It's not your business unless they discuss it in conversation. If I had a dollar... For every time somebody asked me, why am I single? Why am I not married? Why I don't have a kid? Let's just say I put Oprah's guest house to shame. 
Because <laughs> why does it bother you? Why? Why? Why are you asking me all of this? And you don't even know me. You're not cool with me. I'm probably never going to see you again. I'm I'm about to quit this job. Not actually quitting this job. But, like, why are you asking me this, Paula? I'm just throwing out names. Why are you asking me this, Paula? Huh? Gertrude? Why is my uterus your business? <laughs> like, why? What's your problem? Let's go to number five. If a person, friend, or business associate pays for food, a ride share, sorry, typo, etc., try paying for the next outing or gift them another way if they are the type to refuse payment. It shows appreciation. I have a best friend, right? Now, some of you who are on Clubhouse with For No Fame and the rest of us may have heard or, you know, kind of been around to know that sometimes I like to go with my friends to TGI Fridays because somehow we're there, but also feel like we partially work there because we know half the staff and they greet us at the door and they're hype, right? Side note, sidebar. But this specific friend that I go with, she never lets me be great. And she always finds a way to sneakily pay for us both. And I'd be tired of trying to fight with her and the whoever always laugh at the fact that we argue with each other over who's paying for what. So I had to get crafty. Okay. There's a particular bottle of perfume that I have that she likes. So without telling her, I decided to buy the perfume for her and give it to her because she will never accept my form of payment anytime she initiates a friend date. See, that shows that a friendship is not one-sided or maybe a business associate partnership is not one-sided. When you find loopholes to show appreciation if they're not willing to accept it monetarily. Uh -huh. Let's go to number six. If you go out with a large group of friends, more than four people, be prepared to split the bill evenly, even if you only grab water and a salad. If they all agree to pay their portions, awesome. What we're not going to do in 2024 is A, Complain about splitting the bill when you know these restaurants need to make back their money and they definitely add gratuity and tip onto the bill already. Yes, I don't care if you didn't order gratuity and tip. And B, what we're not going to do in 2024 at our grown ages in our teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 80s, don't care, is play duck, duck, dollar when the bill comes. No, we are not going around in a circle and taking turns each putting in a dollar because somebody came up short. You knew your food <laughs> came up to $50. We out with 10 people. So you mean to tell me you didn't prepare for extra $15 to $20? Knowing you was going to go out with these big amount of people, but you still had a big appetite to... We're not doing it. We're not doing it. I'm not about to spiral off at a tangent. Let's go to number seven. Fight me in my email if that's how you feel. But be prepared to bring enough money. If you know you can't afford to grow up, go out in a large group, do not go out in a large group. Uh, a group. Don't do it. Don't do it. Or just say, hey, you know, I can't necessarily make it. I will have my own personal dinner or lunch with you later or something. Can't, you know? Come on now, which I don't do that. I, I like to just enjoy the large groups and I'm willing to pay for my portion or just simply, you know, split it even like that's fine. I am prepared for that. If I don't have money for real, for real, I'm not going to go out. And if I tell you I don't have money and you still decide to pay for me, I'm going to feel awkward and I'm at least borrow money so I can at least tip good. 
because that's what I do. And I got you the next time. That's just me, though. Let's go to number seven. Respect differences of opinions, even if they are wrong from your perspective. The number six in your direction can appear as the number nine in theirs. If there is one thing that I have learned in life, your reality, for the most part, is really half of that is your perception of things and how you respond. Some people have different realities from you off of the simple fact that their perception and the way they have lived is different than yours. And that is okay because reality, in essence, is every perspective simultaneously. So even textbook, they could be wrong, but they're not necessarily wrong for their way of thinking from their perception of things. What if they didn't have your perception to get a full grasp of reality? Uh Let's go number eight. Try your best to not interrupt someone whilst they are speaking. It shows that you are attentive and are listening to understand and not to respond. To avoid forgetting your thought, write it down if you can. Boy, oh boy, if I can just take Communications 102 from college all over again and record everything that little lady said to me from Brooklyn, boy, I, if, let's just go number nine. Saying thank you goes a long way to people who are prone to words of affirmation over acts of service or gift giving. Yes. On this channel, we briefly spoke about love languages, but the translation of this is sometimes people are more prone to hearing thank you instead of you expressing thanks through the act of giving a gift or going out of your way to help them. It's important, especially as a business associate, if you're trying to conduct business with somebody, if you learn the ethics and codes and morale of a business that you're trying to associate yourself with, or if you're trying to get a promotion, sometimes it's important to know the culture in which people work. What are their, what are, what, are, what is the belief system? How do others treat each other in that environment? You will get far when you study how people operate. And this is not to try to manipulate people into getting what you want. It's simply learning people so that you can provide a relationship that's mutually beneficial because all relationships are transactional, whether you like it or not. Uh I just gave (laughs) y'all, I just gave you a golden ticket. Number 10, we're halfway there. Support in public, correct in private. Don't be a disorganized unit with a friend or a business partner in front of others intentionally. Oh my goodness. I already understand this concept in relationships, right? But you'll be surprised how many people you can secretly sabotage just by arguing amongst yourselves when you're supposed to be an organized front in front of others, especially for business. Could you imagine, let's say you're in sales and you're arguing with somebody over facts about what you're supposed to be selling in front of the customer? They're going to be like, okay, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. This guy does. But either way, their conflicting ideologies of what they're supposed to be selling doesn't make me feel confident in their product. I don't want to support or put my money in that or buy. I'm out. I'm going to, I'm going to Pepsi instead of dealing with Coke. Do you see how that is a conflict? Are you following me? 
<laughs> when really you could have just said in private, like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm head nodding, agreed with everything that was correct. But hey, just for next time, pulling to the side, I just want to let you know, like, that's not the right statistics. We can brush up on that later. I'll, I'll help you for your quota next month. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference and there's a way about going into those things. Okay. Number 11, avoid commenting on someone's weight, especially when greeting them. In fact, avoid the topic unless they bring it up. Put a one in the chat if a family member, especially a woman figure, has made you feel a way about your weight. Put a two in the chat if it wasn't a family member but it was a quote unquote friend. Ciao. Moment of silence for all of the relationships that went sour when people brought up your weight. Cause why? What was the point of that? What, why does that change your perception of somebody per se? Let's go to number 12. When someone gives you their phone to look at something, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Do not scroll to the left. Do not scroll to the right. Okay? Do not scroll up. Do not scroll down. I had the sorry mistake of doing this when I was 14 years old in my cousin's cell phone and I have never been the same since. I can't even look at him the same. And I haven't seen him since 2007. <laughs> my parents low key don't even know why. I just don't even want to see him ever again. But like, Bro, let's just move on to number 13. <laughs> okay. If, if someone, a friend or business associate, tells you they are going to the doctor, do not inquire about it. Health records are no one's business. If they want you to know, they'll tell you. <sighs> this. Not me ready to square up with someone when I said I had to go to a doctor's appointment at my last job. And I had a coworker that jokingly, jokingly, but still said it in front of everybody. So what's up with you? Why, why are you leaving? Bro. What? I don't really think anybody wants to know about the OBGYN. Like, I think you should have just, <laughs> you know, just. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. Treat the janitor with the same respect as the CEO. Treat the waiter or waitress with the same respect as the head chef. And please tip. One of the major things that puts a bad taste in my mouth when I'm first meeting somebody and we hang out, if we go out to eat or let's say if we're coworkers and we either go out to eat or we order lunch at work, and you're rude to people who handle your food and you don't tip, that's my first and last time ever doing something with you because it's very telling of how you treat people who are in fields of power that are quote unquote less than yours. They're in a place of servitude. 
how you treat people who are serving you, people who you don't necessarily have the most beneficial relationship with outside of a a small fragment in time, says a lot about your integrity. When you do the right thing and no one's watching. Let's go to number 15. Please maintain eye contact while someone is speaking to you. Looking at your phone or multitasking can come off as rude or you being disinterested. Okay? This really, this one right here, if I can give Gen Z and Gen Alpha any advice, it would definitely be this one. The way I speak to some of these kids and teenagers, and it will be the most thought-provoking advice, most sound advice for your everyday life. Like I'm Lori Beth Denberg. And they will just be like, huh? What? Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. While scrolling through TikTok, Lemonade, whatever. If I could Bart Simpson them, just squeeze. (laughs) Just make me so angry. Number 16, don't offer advice unless you ask if you can first. Your instinct may be to help, but some people may just want to feel heard. If you don't want them to vent, excuse yourself. Men, are you in the room? (laughs) Because I was just talking about this with someone as of lately, how instinctually men always have better skills than women at problem solving, while women in instinctually have better, I would say, they would have an easier time expressing frustration than men. So here we go with problem solving, more so intellect over emotional intelligence, mind versus heart. One is always programmed to act a certain way over the other when it comes to the sexes. Please understand, while you may want to vent to people also, not everybody is in the right state of mind or at the right place to want to hear you as you vent. Maybe things aren't exactly time appropriate, especially if you're at work and others are around, like in the coffee room, water cooler, bathroom, all that. No ditty for the bathroom, because what are you venting about with another man in the bathroom? That's weird. I was mostly talking about women. <laughs> Let's just go to the next one. <laughs> I'm on a roll today. Number 17. Never be the first to ask about age or salary. It only makes people's ideas of you change, and it's not always for the better. Have you ever, all oh my young whippersnappers, have you ever been to a job and you know that your coworker is considerably older than you? And you ever got a vibe that they asked you, maybe after a week or so of working there, maybe a month, two months, they ask you how old you are, but you don't necessarily get a quote unquote safe vibe from them that they're asking because of interests in a good way. Maybe it's to rationalize in their head why you are the way you are. You don't have to answer, by the way. 
But for the people who are prone to doing this, I need you to understand asking questions is, is for clarity is cool, but with what intentions? Which leads me to the next one, 18. If you're not involved, mind your business. In fact, this is like the number two most important unspoken rule of any job slash career. Mind your business if you're not involved. And number one is the famous CYA, cover your arse. That is a gem for those of you who are entering a stage of professionalism who are in their late teens, early 20s, okay? Take advice from me. I'm not going to say how old I am, but sometimes my knees need an oil change. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Don't come for me, okay? Number 19. Take off your sunglasses when having a serious discussion. It instills a sense of respect and sincerity. Unless you are on a business trip in Cancun, Mexico, and your boss is Michael Scott, there is no reason as to why you need to speak to your boss with sunglasses, signing contracts, Anything with sunglasses. If you're having a heart to heart with your friend, please do not be Jim Jones and keep your sunglasses on, even if it's 10 p.m. Because why? My father told me there's only two specific people that wear sunglasses indoors the blind and the ash hole. And last but not least, my final bit <laughs> of, <laughs> of social etiquette advice for friends and business partners, do not talk about your wealth amongst those that are struggling financially or about your children with those who cannot reproduce. We just left the weekend. It is Tuesday. Mother's Day was just two days ago. If you were personally impacted by the amount of mothers who asked you all these questions, okay, maybe it was an aunt, a grandma, your mom, about when you're going to have a child. Or even if you're a man. Real talk. I want to give you a virtual hug. Because whether you can or cannot, it's not appropriate. And I know some people just don't look at it as that way. But it really is. We don't talk about it enough how people really should just stop with certain questions, just stop. And I'm not trying to come from a place of, oh, the world just needs to be more sensitive because the world is already too sensitive right now. I'm going to be honest. It's really irritating. But if there is anything that you can take away from this series, I want it to be known that friendships are not something to be taken lightly. Depending on who you decide to make friends with, this person can give you energy or deplete your energy. This person can inspire you or demotivate you. And I need you to also understand that it's okay to let go of people. Friendships are hard enough to make as an adult in your 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. But just for the simple fact that they're hard to make doesn't mean you have to maintain bad ones just to say you have a friend. Ooh. Because sometimes choosing peace sometimes means choosing the grieving process to do and receive better. 
Track stars, I thank you for sharing your time with me. I hope you enjoyed with my foolishness, <laughs> my words of wisdom that were gifted to me by this anonymous person in the emails. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will also be on here Sunday to discuss another anonymous email, which is pretty thought provoking. Speaking of earlier about perceptions, about how your perception may see the figure number six and another's may show nine. This email on Sunday that I will be discussing is a hard hitter, but this person was brave enough and shall remain anonymous to speak on a situation that I feel may hit home for many. And one of the reasons why I created this channel wasn't just for laughs and self-reflection and interpersonal relationships, but somewhat of a safe haven so others can communicate, can connect, and help and build with each other, if needed. And I'm so happy that in less than a year, this is finally becoming full circle. I'm running my race on this track, one track record. I am building the interpersonal communications with you, I am bettering myself along in the process with you guys. I'm learning so much from you. You guys say that you learn from me. I learn from you too. And what started off as a social experiment is now becoming the highlight. One of the highlights of my day-to-day, -day, my weeks. And I couldn't make this possible without every single one of you that are interacting in the live section, the comment section, on Instagram. And you guys are just so generous. And I ain't even going to talk about the donations because, yo, y'all going to make me cry for real. But I thank you for sharing your time with me again this beautiful Wednesday night. And I will be sharing pretty soon some more updates on what will be happening with the channel. But if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And you can always hit me up on Instagram if you're not really a fan of Gmail. That's cool, too. I'll, I'll take DMs just as long as you're not creepy. <laughs> and thank you again. I'm so humbled. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I will type and chat with you later. Later, track stars.